Well, let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. I'm going to begin with a high-level bird's eye view of the two VIs, and then we'll come back and talk about the details. Let's begin with PC main. This is a single process loop containing an event structure. And the, the main action here is to send a UDP datagram anytime you see a change in value on the front panel controls. System information is appended to the requested LED state, flattened to a JSON string, sent as a UDP datagram, and then we read the response from the, the UDP server running on the target. So here's the message that gets sent, and here's the message that's returned. Taking a high level look at RT main, this is the code running on the RT target. We wait for a UD UDP datagram to be received, and then especially pick out the requested LED state and use that to drive the onboard LEDs. The onboard button and accelerometer values are bundled together with some system information and then sent back to the UDP client. Now let's take a look at the details of PC main. This particular subdiagram of the event structure runs for several different reasons. One of those is based on the timeout feature. So I'll show you how to access that. Select application and then timeout. Now the timeout uh, terminal is located here. First call is true the very first time that the VI runs, and that feeds in a zero timeout, and that executes all the code in that subdiagram. After that, first call is false, and then we pick one of these two values. This control right here, auto send, when that's true, that value selects a timeout of 1000 milliseconds. That means that the subdiagram executes once every second. If it's false, then it just waits for a change on any one of the front panel controls. Now, after opening the UDP port, anytime we need to send a UDP datagram, we form a cluster based on this type definition. Now, this is a user control or custom control, and it contains a cluster of these values. Let's take a moment to learn how to make one of these, just in case you haven't done this before. Go to My Computer, choose New Control, and then select Strict Type Definition. I'm going to begin by placing a cluster and then inserting the various controls and indicators inside that cluster. Now the big advantage of a type definition is you, you define this in one place and then all of the other VIs or sub-VIs that might need this information can access this same standard uh, type definition. So I have a pair of these, one for the client information and another for the server information. Again, it's the same type definition for both targets. All right, once this cluster has been defined, we flatten it to a JSON string, JavaScript Object Notation. This is an ASCII string that encodes numerics, text, and arrays. This JSON string is sent as the UDP datagram to the server IP address and port number. And then the PC host waits for up to five seconds for the server on the RT target to respond. The response, which is also a JSON string, is unflattened based on the cluster defined by the type definition. And finally, the local IP addresses of the PC host are determined from string to IP with the multiple output option enabled. And that displays all of the available IP addresses for the PC host. Finally, on a stop or air condition, we close the UDP port. Let's move on to the detailed operation of RT main. This is the server running on the RT target. UDP open is based on the user selected listening port. And then UDP read waits for UDP datagrams to be received. I have a default here of 1000 milliseconds or one second for the timeout. 
If no datagram is received within that timeout window, it generates error 56, and we can clear that error, uh, do nothing else, and then go back and wait for another message. When we receive a UDP datagram, we know the address and the port of the source of that datagram, and then that information is displayed here. The message from the UDP client is then parsed according to the JSON unflattener. We extract the LED values and then use those to operate the onboard LEDs. The onboard button and three axis accelerometer values are bundled together into this cluster along with information about the system itself. This cluster is flattened to a JSON string and then sent as a response to the UDP client. The process loop ends with either an error message or the stop control being pressed and we close the UDP port. Let's now finish up by locating the functions on their various subpalettes. Look under Data Communication, Protocols, and UDP. Here we see UDP Open, Read, Write, and Close. Those are the four that were used in this project. Under Timing, you can find the System Date and Time string. And I'm using the option that also shows the system seconds. The JSON uh, functions are located under strings. And we have to JSON and from JSON. And finally, the first call function is located under synchronization.